Hello and good morning there. Uh, we've got a wonderful morning session for you, the start of the Green Week, the third day of the Green Week here in, in Brussels. And we've got a, a, an interesting uh, topic and a great panel put together for you. Uh, what is being uh, announced as the, the morning or breakfast session of this Green Week, because I think it's the earliest session we have uh, throughout the week. And uh, the idea was to give you more insights into the into the design and the, the planning and, and the opportunities that arise from the zero pollution monitoring and outlook framework that was announced by the commission when the zero pollution action plan for air, water and soil was adopted on the 12th of May. Uh, we have uh, decided not to have a lot of presentations or go too much into the technical details, but we will really try to provide a bit of appetite, a bit of uh, bits and pieces of information that hopefully want, uh, leaves you wanting more uh, so that you can check out uh, the details in, in the documents that are available and then join in this activity because it's going to be another activity on zero pollution where we need lots of input, where we need lots of expertise and, and energy to really, really make a positive difference uh, in terms of using monitoring and outlook for designing the best policies to achieve our zero pollution ambition. Uh, without further ado, I would like to briefly introduce uh, our panel before we get uh, going. And I am delighted, and I thought first I will welcome him from Copenhagen, but I heard earlier that he is uh, here in, in, in Belgium. So I'll be happy to welcome, thanks for joining us, Hans Breuning, the director of the European Environment Agency. Hans, how are you doing? Good morning, doing fine, and happy to be on the panel. Thanks, Hans. And uh, here, I guess, in Brussels, uh, we have uh, Stephen Quest, who is uh, Director General of our in-house uh, science branch, the Joint Research Center. Stephen, how are you doing? Very good, thanks. Thanks for having me today. Nice to be with you. Yeah, great uh, that you could uh, also make time. And last but certainly not the least, and I want to start with Marius as well, is Marius Vasega, who is Head of Cabinet of uh, Commissioner Sinkevicius. And all, you all know by now that Commissioner Sinkevicius is Commissioner for environment, uh, oceans, and fisheries, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Marius, good morning. Absolutely. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm connecting today from Vilnius, capital of Lithuania, where Commissioner is on his uh, official visit. So uh, that's the beauty of uh, video meetings, right? To, to be able to connect from all over uh, Europe. Indeed, and I think that is the great, uh, great experience also during this year's Green Week, where we can bring people together who otherwise probably would have not been able to make it either to Brussels or find time in their schedule to join for half an hour for a session. So I'm really great to have you all. And Marius, I want to really kick off with you already as a first uh, uh, introduction. Uh, can you tell us a little bit from the perspective of yourself, from the perspective of the Commissioner, what was the intention? What is, why is the Zero Pollution Monitoring Outlook Framework a so important part of the, of the action plan? Yes, indeed. Um, and in fact, we have spoken uh, this Green Week uh, a lot about the EU action plan on, on, on zero pollution. Uh, but there is one aspect that has not been mentioned in detail so far, and that is the Zero Pollution Monitoring and Outlook Framework. Uh, we are collecting a lot of data on pollution, but uh, with the ambition to achieve zero pollution for a toxic-free environment by 2050, we set out a new ambitious and overarching tool to help us get there, because only what is measured is managed. So the Commission proposed a monitoring and outlook framework that uh, uh, monitors progress towards the 2030 targets and 2050 ambition, gives us an overall view on the total impact of pollution on our health, and the extent to which pollution acts as a driver for biodiversity loss, looks back the trends and looks forward at the developments uh, to estimate whether current actions are sufficient or whether new pollution concerns are emerging, makes better use of advanced data sources, for example, from Copernicus or citizen science, takes advantage of new digital technologies such as uh, new sensors or artificial intelligence. So, Taking all this together, the monitoring and outlook framework can act as a compass on whether we are on the right course or whether we need to change direction. And, and this can drive change at global, European, uh, or country level, 
uh, uh, but can also help at regional and local level. And I'm very happy that we have secured the excellent competencies of the Commission's Joint Research Center and the European Environment Agency uh, to co-lead these uh, developments together. Um, several flagships in this Zero Pollution Action Plan will rely on an improved zero pollution monitoring. Uh, for example, reducing health inequalities through zero pollution will bring together health, social and, and pollution data which can help show inequalities. So promoting zero pollution across regions, which is uh, flagship three, will better demonstrate the performance of the regions in achieving agreed objectives in, uh, uh, in EU laws. The energy and climate policy benefits from an integrated assessment as set out in, in, in governance regulation for air pollution. We have a similar system in place, the Clean Air Outlook project, uh, um, the, the measures that we have agreed forward and estimates what we can achieve if we fully implement that. Uh, uh, the second Clean Air Outlook was published in January and it has been the source of inspiration for the air pollution targets in the action plan. And, and we want to do something similar now for water, marine and soil to see whether our existing policies are on track or whether we need additional measures. And uh, uh, we, we, we can do so much better in, 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 in really uh, many areas. When I see that for some EU policies, assessment reports are being published several years after the data have been generated, then we have a problem. Also data have a sell by date. So, so we work together to reduce these delays from the data producers in the member states to the, to the data users in the EU institutions and, and agencies to add value to our efforts. Uh, for example, via the uh, air quality index, uh, the uh, EEA has already managed to display almost real time data on, on air quality uh, there where you are. And can we not achieve this also in uh, other areas? Uh, you know, digital solutions and technologies are evolving rapidly. Uh, we have presented uh, together with the Zero Pollution Action Plan, a paper on digital solutions for, for zero pollution. And, and there one can find 30 examples that, uh, you know, what the potential is to use these innovations for achieving our green policy goals. So uh, also in the field of data generation, transmission, processing and analysis, there is an ever increasing uh, array of possibilities to complement our classical monitoring efforts. For example, the way smartphones can be used by citizens to detect air or noise pollution or artificial intelligence can analyze huge amounts of data in a smart way. We are only at the beginning of these developments, but the key is to bring the efforts of the green and digital transition together. Thank you, Marius. I think you gave already a, a wide uh, array of, of subjects that we can uh, deepen and, and the perfect segue to ask uh, Stephen now from, from the perspective of the Joint Research Center. You have a lot of experience, a lot of competencies in, in a lot of these, these elements that, uh, that uh, Marius has, has mentioned. From your perspective, what are the opportunities? What can we achieve further than what we already have by, by in, investing in such an integrated uh, zero pollution monitoring? Well, thanks. Yeah, I, I think that's a great question. And, um, you know, it, it chimes in for me with, with the overall level of ambition for this zero pollution action plan, which is, which is very high. I mean, the messages that, that I've got um, uh, from, from, from the commissioners uh, is, is that we have to act now and, and, and that we, we really need to underline the economic case for acting on pollution. And, and the Joint Research Centre um, really is keen to play a very, a very important role in supporting this action. Our, our role is to provide independent, uh, evidence-based knowledge and science to, to support EU policies. And uh, in that sense, we're looking really to be a key contributor uh, to this action plan uh, and the framework for monitoring both the past trends, but also looking, looking towards the future. And, uh, you know, what we're seeing in the Joint Research Centre is, is that the, the, the pandemic has, I think, underlined even more the critical role of science in, in supporting policy. And what is also underlined is, is, is the importance of having very timely and targeted scientific input, but also multidimensional uh, scientific input. And this is a challenge that we see uh, very, very closely related to the challenge of zero pollution, because we need an integrated framework uh, and we need robust monitoring and, 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 and forward thinking as well. So what we can do is mobilize and aggregate science and knowledge, both from within the Joint Research Center and with other partners uh, across the European Union, including, of course, with uh, Hans uh, and the colleagues in the European Environment Agency. Um, 
maybe just give you one example because I couldn't I don't want to give you a catalogue of different activities of the JRC you can you can check it out on our website but, but one example um, uh, under flagship two of the action plan so urban zero pollution action I mean here we have quite an exciting initiative that we're contributing to from the JRC which is the new European Bauhaus project mm. uh, it was launched by the president last year in the State of the Union and what this project tries to do is break down the boundaries between uh, science and technology uh, art, culture, social inclusion, to really work to transform living spaces. And as part of that transformation, of course, you want them to be pollution free areas. So there's an interesting joining up of other initiatives, which very much will contribute to this, the, 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 the actions in this, in this action plan. I think you have a, a session on the Bauhaus later on today, so I'm yeah, going to let exactly. in more detail. But basically, we will, we will be there with you along this journey, contributing with, with a wide range of tools to measure progress, um, uh, to help uh, to model uh, uh, as we go forward uh, and, to, and to work on indicators, to work on foresight and so on. So you can certainly count on us um, uh, as, you, as you go down this journey. Thanks a lot. Thank, thanks a lot, Stephen. And as you did so well, I think this is meant, the whole session is meant to be an appetizer. So please, for those who are watching, check out the Bauhaus session later. There are also plenty of other sessions where some of the projects that Stephen has mentioned that the JRC is doing are going to be presented, as will be also for what the EA is, is doing on, on pollution and other related things. Hans, the EA has been working on pollution for many, many years. I think one of the first reports I read when I started uh, working in, in, in Germany back then was about water pollution in Europe. And so one could say, is, well, there's quite a number of years that we are, we are collecting uh, information. And the EEA is already leading the way when Marius has mentioned the air quality index of air quality information that is available. So what do you think is the next milestone, the next stepping stone that we can achieve by, by investing in an integrated uh, zero pollution output and monitoring system? Thanks for the question, Joachim. I, I can start by saying that we were really enthusiastic about the fact that uh, on top of the high goals and ambitions of zero pollution, uh, we, we saw the same uh, level of ambition when it comes to innovation and integration in monitoring and reporting, huh? because indeed that's our core business uh, uh, together with, uh, with others, including the JRC. And we think that uh, often when there is new regulation coming, uh, th there could be an, an innovation and integration also in monitoring and reporting. So we welcome the fact that this is rather central in the zero pollution. And I would like to emphasize a couple of things. First of all, um, we could do a lot more with the data that we already have, yeah? because the data is often based in and, and gathered and analyzed in a very segmented, fragmented, if not to say a silo uh, type way. So by putting it together, we will have a better understanding of the sources of pollution, because air pollution, water pollution, industrial pollution, they often come from the same sort of economic activity or sources. Mm -hmm. So by integrating, we understand the dynamics better. We will also understand the, the combined pressures on the environment and on human health better. And we will be better able to monitor action policies that are taken. So that is, that is essential. A second element is the innovation. Uh, we, we see a lot of potential in uh, Copernicus, in uh, citizen science, in Internet of Things type monitoring, and by integrating that in a system that allows for different sources of data, we will have better granularity, we will uh, have better timeliness. All of that can be uh, of great help as well to, uh, to, to push forward this agenda of uh, zero pollution. What I also think, and that's where I'm, I'm super glad that it's embedded in the, the plan, is that the, the link between the monitoring and the forward-looking dimension. Uh, mm. and, and that's where the good collaboration with the JRC will be central. Because we have a tendency to monitor the past, uh, by definition. But if you have high ambitions towards the future, a sort of distance to target, a sort of options, yeah, scenarios, which policies do we think will deliver, to what extent will be necessary. And in order to do that, you need solid data and information, yeah, which we have, but you also need the methodologies to do these scenario exercises, the modeling, and where that is not possible, more qualitative forward-looking policy analysis. So 
by putting together uh, the knowledge of a number of institutions, I think we have a, a really good chance to, uh, to be innovative on the monitoring and reporting side, just as much as we are on the side of the policy ambitions. And I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, contributing to that uh, together with the, the JRC colleagues, but also with others in the, in the countries. Uh, because at the end of the day, policy implementation usually takes place at the country or the city level, mm -hmm. and to make sure that that is also integrated in our thinking about monitoring, reporting, and then the translation into policy language, I think will be critical. Thanks. Excellent. Well, you gave a, a lot of uh, important uh, elements for, for what we can now discuss a little bit uh, in more detail. Uh, particularly what struck me is your point uh, linking to uh, the many aspects that exist that are sometimes in silos and that are not connected uh, uh, well together. So there is, of course, the Zero Pollution Action Plan is, of course, part of the European Green Deal of the wider policy ambition. And we have, uh, we have our climate ambition, biodiversity, circular economy. Uh, we have transport, health, uh, energy. Is, everything is, is, is addressed in the policy framework. And obviously, there is also monitoring going on. How do you see the links? How can we create the synergies and benefits and avoid that we create a new silo uh, by, by creating a, a zero pollution integrated monitoring as a, as, a, as a specific activity? Who wants to come in? I want to make this a little bit interactive. So uh, if, uh, if you're shy, I will call you out. But who wants to come in on this first? And please do react on what um, the others well, say. Hans, yeah, go ahead. I, go ahead. Since I, I, uh, I fear that you will call me shy, I will preempt, <laughs> uh, I will preempt that. No, I, I think one of the things is, of course, that uh, the policy setting now is integrated. And so the push to make that not only an ambition and a concept, but to do joint policy development that links pollution across a number of domains and looks at the impacts collectively, I think that's the starting point. And then uh, the, the, the request uh, to uh, the JRC and the EEA to jointly put together this monitoring scheme and to bring together this data is, is the equivalent of that on, on that side. And then you have a number of technical issues. Now you need to be able to combine data uh, and we have the system for that. You need to be able to combine data in a forward looking manner. I think that's uh, where the JRC has uh, really strong competencies. Uh, and you need to be able to integrate indeed with new sorts of data. And we have set up our, our report net uh, to, to do exactly that. We work with, uh, with Copernicus, so that's good. And, and then in the end, I think you will need to have the courage uh, and that will not be able for some actor or easy for some actors, I think, to leave a bit of the past behind and to really embrace the innovation and say, yeah, maybe some of the methods uh, that we've used uh, are anchored in technology, any methodology and understanding of the 80s and 90s. And maybe we need to move on here and there and really have the courage to jump and innovate. So if, if we can work along those lines and we do it collectively, I think we can contribute to breaking through uh, the silos. Who wants to come in? Anybody? Reaction? Stephen, please. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, I think, I mean, I, I very much agree with what Hans was saying. And I mean, the, the, the thing that I observe from, from the way the Green Deal uh, package is, 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 is moving forward is that it is encouraging us very strongly to work in a more integrated way. Um, and this holistic approach, I think, is absolutely, is absolutely fundamental. And certainly uh, the Joint Research Center, I mean, I think has the the, the potential to act within the Commission actually is an integrating force by using the science and the knowledge we have to help help the different departments of the Commission to integrate their work. Um, and we need to use that as a, as a lever. I'll give you one example. If you look at the area of, of, of our work on cancer, uh, where there's a lot of interaction between the, the world of the environment and, and health, um, the air pollution, clearly uh, a, a, a significant cause of premature death and disease because you've got particulate matter, um, which, is, which is a classified cause of cancer. And this is going to affect you know, many millions uh, of people in the European Union each year. But work on cancer in, within the European Commission is highly multidisciplinary. I think there are sort of mm -hmm. somewhere between 10 and 15 different departments in the Commission mm -hmm. who are doing work related to cancer. Um, what we've done now in the JRC is to propose the creation of a knowledge center on cancer. 
which we will run together with the different departments, uh, notably those on, on health, environment, research, innovation, to bring together this knowledge and help to join it up. And that helps us to build the bridges between the different silos and ensure that we can tackle these sort of wicked problems in a, in a more joined up way. So that's just one very practical example, this knowledge center on cancer of a way in which we help to, to really underpin this more holistic approach to policy making. It's interesting you mentioned that uh, just uh, briefly, we got a phone call after we published the, uh, the Zero Pollution Action Plan and the monitoring from a member state, I won't name it, and they said they got in touch with the health ministry because they have a similar project ongoing and it would be interesting to speak to us, but to whom could they speak to? And I couldn't identify the one person who knows it all about bringing these different uh, uh, disciplines together, but that's a good, good example, Stephen. Thank you. Marius, you wanted to come in, please. Yes, well, I can uh, only agree with uh, uh, with uh, Stephen and with, with Hans, uh, uh, but just to, to, to also put it in, in the perspective uh, of the Green Deal in a sense that uh, Green Deal is, of course, is, is, uh, is a big political priority uh, for, for, for the Commission. This means that we, are, we have really reinforced uh, our policies uh, and, and are still reinforcing our policies in, uh, in the climate area, in the environment area, also in, in many other areas. And in that sense, the Green Deal is actually uh, an integration exercise by itself, because this is where you put uh, all the policies in, 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 in one uh, framework, right? Um, of course, now to develop them further, you know, we take biodiversity strategy, which, on which we have been working, we take uh, circular economy action plan, we can take chemical strategy, we can take even the, uh, the zero pollution action plan. There again, you go into, into uh, uh, separate uh, areas, and, uh, uh, and uh, you know, um, to, in order to develop, in order to deepen those areas. So I think the, the monitoring framework helps to keep that uh, uh, overview. It helps to, to keep the integration under the, uh, um, you know, under the chapeau of, of, of the Green Deal of, of all these areas. So this is why I see, you know, the, the big added value of the, uh, of the uh, uh, monitoring framework. Thanks, please. If, if, I can, if I can follow up on that, I think this link with the integration dimension of the European Green Deal is, is, uh, is essential, but it also opens up uh, an, another set of potential linkages. And we know that pollution uh, and the impact of pollution is not equally distributed in society mm -hmm. either. Yeah? And we, we've got the just transition um, dimension as well so investing also in linking the type of data that we are now talking about and prospects of improvements to socioeconomic data and the distribution across layers of society or we know also that parts of europe suffer much more from certain types of pollution like air pollution i think that that's yet another element that is important because if we speak about leaving nobody behind it also means that we need uh, data and solid analysis to, to uh, give that substance. And I think uh, this socio-economic and health link could, be, could play uh, an important role there. And, and it's, it's very strongly embedded in the thinking of the European Green Deal. So that's another avenue of integration, I think. Indeed, and uh, I was very interested to see very recently that I think it's a JRC who published the inequalities uh, monitoring framework with already including air quality data in, in the question of how does that affect different groups of society. But I think we can do much more in that respect. Uh, another point that I wanted to, to throw in uh, and that you all mentioned very strongly, so I would be interested if you want to elaborate a, a bit more, is the perspectives that innovation, new technology, digital, digitalization can bring. I think you all gave uh, examples, but it left me wanting more. Anybody wants to elaborate a little bit on the, on the fact uh, that, that we have also new opportunities that we maybe didn't have five or 10 years ago? Yeah, shall, I, shall I jump in here? Yeah, please. Is that okay? Please. I, mean, I, I think you're right. There's the, you know, there are many, many opportunities. And I mean, you know, Hans made the point about using the data that we've got. Uh, Marius made the point about the need to keep the data up to date and so on. But I mean, if we, if we look at the, the mass of data we're now getting from the, the Copernicus um, Sentinel missions. Um, this, this enables us, for example, to, do, to, to monitor methane emissions um, and to m identify in a much quicker way where we have methane hotspots emerging 
and actually to, to zoom in and identify individual sources, whether it's oil or gas facilities or whatever, and enable the immediate measurement of emissions and more effective mitigating action. Um, so it's possible now with the data we can get from Copernicus combined with artificial intelligence and combined with smart local level action to both identify problems and react and act much more quickly uh, than we could in the past where we would be much more sort of monitoring trends and saying well something happened but there's nothing we can do about it because it's too late. Here you've got you know, almost the opportunity to act in, act in, in quasi real time because of the, the vast amounts of data and the ability to process it. So I think you know, that's just one example of how we can really now start to make a positive impact. Mm -hmm. Hans? Yeah, and, and there, I mean, there's also things like eDNA that we can use in water. There, there is uh, automatic monitoring that, that has potential. There are drones. I mean, the, 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 the variety of uh, data sources is very large. So putting together a solid, credible, legitimate uh, uh, sort of data infrastructure uh, that, that can feed policies, but also the immediacy of, of citizens. Well, I mean, when, when you use your smartphone and you go anywhere in the world uh, and you open Google Maps, you get information on what restaurant is there and where to go to the hairdresser and other rather uh, often, in my case, useless information. But anyway, uh, could we imagine that wherever you go in Europe, you click on an app and you get information on the pollution there and uh, you can dive into uh, other sorts of things that are related to your health or whether you want to build your house there or I mean there, there are all sorts of uh, potential uh, applications of this new sort of data if we can connect it to what drives citizens what drive investors to make investing uh, investments what what is driving local uh, authorities to uh, make, for example, decisions on spatial planning. I mean, there's all sorts of elements that, that we can do in the future, but it requires innovation and integration as, as the very basis. We will not get there if we hold on to segmented methodologies and technologies that are, that are often coming from the, the 90s uh, or the noughties. Uh, so uh, moving forward is the, the message, I think. Excellent. Time is running. So, Marius, short point, and then we make a final round uh, to wrap yeah, up. Yeah, just parties. yeah, yeah. Just uh, very briefly, I think uh, Hans uh, really put, uh, put forward a number of interesting uh, ideas where technologies can be used, and and they are being used. And I, I, I mentioned myself, you know, what we do on the uh, on monitoring of, uh, of of air quality. You know, uh, how we are exploring how to improve monitoring and modeling of air quality, how to inform citizens uh, most effectively about it. Uh, and, and here, of course, there are smart and digital solutions, but another area as well, and, and here the, um, uh, uh, you know, the satellite systems have been, have been mentioned. Uh, uh, if we look at the state of forest, you know, now we are working uh, with the Commission of on the, on the forest strategy and on the station legislative proposal. And these are the two ones where, uh, as well, you know, digital solutions can be playing a very, very big role, and uh, and 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 we are certainly uh, uh, be doing that. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's not only the green transition that we are speaking, but also about the digital transition. Um, so, so both have to have have to go hand in hand. And 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 I think uh, you know, zero pollution action plan and also integrated framework will be really helpful. Excellent. I think it was wonderful. We could continue, I'm sure, with your passion and interest and knowledge, uh, we could uh, go on. But I think to close off, 30 seconds, everybody, what's the key message, the one sentence that you want everybody's watching uh, to take away with uh, from, from, this, from this short discussion? Hans, I would like to start with you. Please, go ahead. Yeah, I see it as our task to bring the type of integrated and innovative uh, knowledge monitoring and reporting that matches the ambitions of uh, the zero pollution package. And it's a package that, that needed to have that ambition because of our health and uh, the future of uh, ecosystems uh, that we are dealing with. So matching that ambition and being a solid partner in, in that policy trajectory. Excellent. Stephen, what's your thoughts? Yeah, well, I, I'd say that, you know, we need to make progress on this very important topic and it requires action, you know, from the political level right down to the level of individual citizens. And what we can offer from the JRC is, is sound science, sound evidence, knowledge, analysis, and monitoring 
to support those choices uh, and, and, and help us make the progress that we need to make. And you can certainly count on us as we go on this journey. Fantastic, thank you. Marius, last words. Yes, we are looking forward, of course, to, to working with the Joint Research Center and with the European Environment Agency, uh, because they are our main partners you know, to, to consolidate zero pollution monitoring and outlook systems under the European Green Deal. But I think we, we need many more uh, to join in and, and together with all commission services and associated agencies, uh, we will also be reaching out to uh, experts from member states, social partners, from industry, from academia, civil society to contribute to these efforts because I think uh, we need a, a dedicated uh, dialogue, you know, uh, with them and also with our international organizations and partners to to really build a uh, uh, a good uh, uh, framework uh, for monitoring. Super. That leaves me now just to say thank you to all the three of you. It was fantastic. I certainly enjoyed it. I think everybody watching out there has enjoyed it as well. Check out the webpage, check out the rest of the Green Week. There are lots of interesting sessions also linked to monitoring and enjoy uh, the, the work that we are now only about to start, not only on monitoring, but in achieving our zero pollution ambition. Thanks a lot. Have a good morning and a good uh, afternoon. Take care. Bye-bye.